Welcome everybody to our live. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to restart 2.0 of the alphabet blocks. And we're going to restart with A again tonight, and then every week, alternatively, we will do the consecutive one. So this one is easy. We're doing a bilingual one. So A is for Apple as well as R is for Apple. How are we going to do our blocks? We are constructing them out of um, unbleached calico, which we are then going to iron a piece of violin to the back of this to get it to stabilize. They will be in the file section of of the um, Facebook page. The pattern, as well as the instructions, will be there for the first couple of weeks. After that, it will only be patterns. We've got a helper. Say hello, Maximilian. Anyway, so what we now need to do first is to get our block stable so that we can actually do some heavy satin stitching, etc. on this. So we're taking it to the iron. And we're going to iron the violin to the back side of the block. There we go. Then we're bringing it back over this side. As you can see, we've made it slightly larger. If I put it down there, it's about half an inch larger than our actual our actual um, sketch. Our blocks are going to be trimmed down after the appliques have been done to 6.5, finishing at 6 in the quilt. So in your PDF file, you'll get the layout block. And then you'll also, with that, get the block that has got all the different pieces to make up the finished block. So with multilingual blocks, um, we will include both patterns for Afrikaans as well as English. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to now take this. Um, next time we'll bring our light box from the shop to make life easier. But Willem will be able to see. So you're taking this and you're putting it the wrong side up. What we normally use is steamer seam. But for this one we're going to use, I've run out of steamer seam at the moment. So we're going to use the, uh, the diamond mesh type applique paper and you put it down wrong side up on your pattern and then just draw along all the lines while he's busy tracing all of these it's going to be much easier to see in with the once it's once it's cut what we need for our blocks we are going to because of our aesthetic in the shop we sell a lot of things to and a lot of quilts to international tourists and they are very much um, they are very much more interested in um, the uh, basic South African fabrics, i.e. the Shui Shui. So we've decided to also make this ABC quilt in Shui Shui fabrics. And what you need is small pieces, off-cut pieces like this is perfect. Um, if you don't have off-cuts and you have to use your meat reach, that's also fine. Here is some meterage to do. And then we can take it from there and play with it. So let's see how far Willem is. He's still tracing. He's going around the apple and the stem. You will see there's an extension. Willem just showed at the bottom the extension on the stem, where the stem is going to go underneath the, there, uh, where the stem is going to go underneath the apple so that everything gets secured properly. You don't do the detail on the leaves, it's just that. Now this, before we, we cut these ones out with the scissors, and then we decide which pieces suit which fabrics. So for instance, in this instance I would like to use this green for the for the leaf. I will use a little bit of the brown for the stem. The apple I think might look good in this red, bright red. And then we can use this green for the capital A and maybe this green 
for the small italic A. So there's our fabrics chosen. So once he's cut out the pieces, I'm going to quickly um, iron them onto iron them onto our fabric. I've left this for very late tonight, so I don't think if it, I don't think we'll have anybody joining us. So there's our leaf, and then what we do is we take our fabric for the leaf, move over towards the. We've got the helper over here. Move over to our. What this is, it's now got the sticky side on one side, and then paper on the other, and we want to utilize this in as small a space as possible, conserving fabric. I'm very, I'm very pedantic about conserving fabric as far as I can. Um, as you can see, shelves and shelves full of very small pieces. So put it down, no steam on the iron, gently just press. Hello, Sonia. Okay, so at least we've got our first viewer. I, I think yes, for non the enigste ene wat ons join. Ek was te laat om vir die ander mense te sê, waarom is ons bezig? Maar ja, ek kan skink vir jou wijn, ek hoop ons entertain jou a bykie. So there we go. That is our leaf. Done on to that. Willem says hi to Sonia. <laughs> ok, daar het Willem ook nou vir jou gegroet. Ok, the next one, we've got our apple. We've decided on the cherry red. So, let me just unfold this, get it close to the machine, close to the, right, nothing, now that I'm unfolding this, on the one side we've got the pattern, and on the wrong side we've got this deep red, it's not so deep red if you look at it now, but without the, it is actually a very deep red color, so nothing prevents you, if you don't like this, to actually utilize the back of a fabric for your appliques. So we're going to, but we will use the right side of this because I like the texture of the little flowers. Um, Max, yes, bikini but my this okay, on back um, yeah. So there we go. I'm going to do all of it. Fantastic. Sonia had a glass in her hand. And it likes me to see three keys from us and so we get us now to the life. Hopefully by the next week we get more people and can us more people by my car sit. Anyway, so the object is to just make this a fun experience for everybody. I just feel it so that it's attached to everything. That's nice, so nice fuss. We have the apple, we have the blar. Capital A will us up here. Met die mooie blommetje op hier, maar ik denk wel, we we're not going to see much of the flower. Let me just iron that flat. I'm playing one hand Luke here, so sorry for getting you seasick. Pop the A into the corner and just press it for a little while until it adheres. What we normally use is steamer seam, which has got a grid of yellow lines on the back of it. Um, but for this instance, we've run out of them, so we're going to use, okay, so there's Willem with the brown. I think we're going to use the wrong side of the brown for this, because the other side is, this is too white for me, so we're going to put this, iron that on the, on the print side, uh, so that we can utilize the wrong side <coughs> of it. And remember, we've now turned, because we worked on the, Glue side, okay, so there's our stem, and the last thing we need to do is the small A, in that little corner we'll do, and then we're ready to cut them out. And my door. So it's all in the now going to begin to Hierdie gaan nou oomblik neem. Ah, 
Hallo Dot, ik zie jij is ook naar Hallo voor Dot. Hallo. Oké. En ons het nie is een glasie, die ons gaan niet aan. But maybe it's not a good idea to have glasses around when you're, when you're using things like that. Anyway, so, or heavy duty equipment. Alright, so there's the A. So what we're now going to do is as Willem progresses, he still needs to cut out all of these pieces for us. We now take our finished pattern template. It. We put our block with the fabric side up on top of it, sort of like center it. I can see most of what's going on underneath it. And then you can use what we now also need to do is now I've got two little hands. Um, Here my oops, yes, I'm going to. This paper is quite quite hectic to get off. Hello Elise. Okay, so what we now need to do is you just poke a little between the paper and your fabric. You poke in with your with a with a pin until you can lift a piece of that fabric. And then you're going to use your nail. So this is now without the there's, the, there's the piece of backing paper that came off. And this is what it looks like. Just the glue remains on the back side of our piece. So now what we need to do, and you can use my exact placement and put them exactly like I've designed it. But no offense will be taken if you decide, for instance, that these two A's shouldn't be next to each other they should be slightly below each other. And if you put it there, all good. I really don't mind. So there we go. Willem has just done this. So he's pulling the capital letter A off of there. So there we go. So I'm going to leave them as we've placed them initially. So there's the small A and there's the big A. Let me just get them in. Order, there we go. A sort of going where they should be. There we are. What I would tell you to mind is do not go too close to the sides because we are still going to trim this down. So if you, I would move this in rather like so and know that I've got enough space here to trim it and to still have a seam allowance. That one was in the right place. Okay. So now what we do is we're placing the stem, and the stem goes underneath the apple, as you can see here. Yeah, Sonia, on the achtergrond, Sonia just asked the question, do we use calico? On the achtergrond material, it was beslijt om dit a boring beige calico to hou. Omdat die calico is ook van die selfde de gamma fabrieke waar die sowieso gemaakt word. So in die rent wat ons nou doen, is ons hou die... Hallo Patty, sê hallo vir Patty. <laughs> ok, ons, wat ons in die rent nou doen, die sowieso uit die de gamma fabriek en die calico wat hulle produce uit die selfde fabriek. Hulle noem die deeste al het calico en dan het hulle ook... Um, seed cloth. Maar al by van hierdie het die selfde, dra die selfde gewig. So dit maak dit net een bykie makkelijker, of dit maak dit, dit beter vir jou applikaas, want al die, al die lappe soort van pas by mekaar gewigsgewijs. So daar is ons blaarkie, ons sit ons so eventjes boe op die ai, 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 met een hand werk het nie so goed nie, daar sy. Ons sit ons so eventjes boe op ons stammik en dan kom die appel. En as Willem die appel geplaas het, Dan vat ons hierdie blokkie versichtig oor na die strijkhuis te doen. Daar is nou, ons gaan gaan die laaste van die appel uit. Jy kan jou, you can use your rotary cutter to do this. 
but we find it's a little bit easier to just use a plain pair of scissors. What we do find, however, Ek vind hierdie, met die korte punt, die bord hier skerk is, met die gebuigde arm, baie makkelijker om hierdie oukies uit te snui. So daar trek hy nou die papier van die laaste, laaste deel af. Maak hom eers bykie los. Die patroon gaan ek vir julle post, hy is nog nie daar nie, maar die oomlik as die video klaas, daar trek hy hem af. Die oomlik as die video klaar is, gaan ek die patroon post as een pdf op in die file seksie van Quiltscraft en Crafty Treasures of Facebook plaats hy. As jy hem nie daar kry by vanavond laat nie, dan sal hy morgen, dan bel jy, dan laat jy my morgen weet en ek die post om vir jou. Jy gaan nie rechtig sien, Willem, hy moet eindelijk net die, jy sit jy applik neer en jy sit om neer en jy pres om. Daar is nie een rechtige back and forth motion, want dan kan jou applik rondskuif. So die oomlik as hy nou so vast is, daar is hy, hy is recht. Nou gaan ek die camera vir jou gee, en dan vat ek die blok hier. Ok, kom ons van hier. Nie te veel van die camera, wees en hy is net te deem op klaar. Ek het hier weg gehaal. Nee, ek gaan met zwart werk, juist omdat hulle die verspil kan sien. Goed, so daar, daar is our block, with the apple, the leaf, the stem, and the capital A with the small A next to it. Ek kan nie onthou wat die moment so small, a klein, klein letterkie A in Engels nie. Anyway, so, wat nou gebeur het, ons het hier, a hoekie, waar die, met die aftrek van die papier, het ons een garing draad daar. Hy gaan een probleem word later. So ek verkies om vir hulle, soos hulle gebeur, af te knip. Dan is hulle uit my pad. Nou wat nou hier by ons gebeur, is hier is net een toetsblok om vir julle te wees hoe. So my machine, as jy hier boven hulle kan wees, het ek getreed met swart garing, en ek het swart garing onder in die bobbin, vir die rede dat het kan uitstaan hier, en dat jy kan sien waarmee ons werk. Ons gaan vanavond wat my ginsteling manier doen, wat ek, wat, ek gaan elke week vir julle ander techniek wees van applik. So we'll run through all the different applique steps and the different ways of doing applique. We'll even do a handwork one. So if you feel like it and you want to do these by hand, then you'll be able to after that. But tonight I'm just going to use my favorite stitch to just get us into the flow of this. And my favorite stitch on my machine is a blanket stitch, which is over here. Ek kom net so'n bykie nader vat. This chap over there. So I'm going to select that. And I've got in my machine, you can, you can swap them around. Um, there's the blanket over there. Let me just double check myself. Yes. And see, number 13 is the one we're going to use now. But number 30 is, it turns, you can either, you can swing it this way or you can swing it the other way. So depending on where you, you want. But otherwise, if your machine can only do it in one direction, don't let it worry, don't let it bother you because then you just turn your, 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 your pattern in the, in the other, in the opposite direction and you work from the other side. Okay, so ek gaan even wil hem terug. Ons gaan nou met zwaard werk, so don't kill me for this. First thing I need to do is take off this quarter inch foot because it will never work with with a zigzag stitch. It will break the needle. And this is now where prep makes all the difference and I did not prep for this. Ons het vanmiddag sessie het eerst besef ons moet, ons het nodig om vanavond online te wees. So toe gebeur alles nou weer skielik. Hy is nie daar, ek denk hy is daar binnen nie. Ja, hy is so waar. Ok. So, the best thing to use for applique is either all machines has got a number one foot, which looks like this has got the plastic part here, which you can see through. I still find it with applique, I still find it difficult to see through the, through the plastic. So I prefer to use a thing called an open toe. 
the needle runs through here and you can exactly in here see where you are going all the time. So I will attach the open toe. There we go. And the moment I start working, you'll see the benefits of using this specific foot to do applique with. Right. So what I normally do is I look at my design. I look at my design and then I decide which is the furthest thing, the furthest back. In this case, the furthest back is the stem, then closer is the leaf, and then closest is the apple. These two doesn't really matter because they are entities on their own. So what we're going to do, we, we're starting to work with a with a with the with the part that's furthest back from you. And what I want to do is I'm going to turn my design over like this. Let me just get this in place. There we are. And normally I have a piece of extra fabric, something to just make a couple of stitches on. Let me just pick something one up and you keep the camera there. <laughs> Okay, I've got a little bit tear away there. So there's a little bit, bit of tear away. I just want to check the size of my, the, the width of my, my blanket stitch to decide what I would like it to be. So there's what we have at the moment. Now you can see if you look at that blanket stitch and you look at the width of the, of the stem, that blanket stitch is far too wide going in to to use for the for the for the for the stem. So what it will work better if we actually make the width of the blanket stitch a little bit smaller. So I'm going to take it down to three and just do a couple of stitches and see what they look like. Can you see that's almost half of what that is? I like this, but I'm even going to go three and a three. Quarters. Let's have a look at what we have now. I find that to be perfect for what we need it to be. So this is what we're going to use for the stem. We're going to alter our stitch width with every unit of the applique that we stitch. So I'm not going to be bothered about that little piece in there. You'll see none of why when I do the, 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 the leaf. But what I want to do is I want to start it off and I'm going to see where my needle goes in. So I place this exactly where I want it to start and then off we go. And what I try to do is the straight stitch, I try to keep straight with the edge of the applique fabric. Not always possible and depending on how many glasses you had, it gets a bit of a, it gets to be a bit of a fush mold. then. I'd also prefer to have my machine with the needle in the down position so that I can stop it and then lift up my foot and slowly start to tilt to, to, to turn my fabric. And you always want to turn it on the outside stitch, not on the inside stitch, as we go around this corner. And then out, turn, in, out, and out. Uh, out, come, come, there we go, turn, straight in and out, and now we're ready to take the long, the long haul down the other side. What I like to do at this point is to cut away the thread so that I can see where I'm going, what I'm doing. So let's still have a little bit of a question, if anyone can join. Let's see if you can be familiar. So now you begin yourselves. <laughs> okay, so there we go. I got to the end of the I got to the end of the stem where the apple is joined. So I'm not going to do that last little piece going around it. I'm just taking out my. I'm not going to do this little piece over here. Can mm -hmm. they see it? This little piece over here. I'm I'm leaving it there because this will be covered with the apple stitches that we make. So the next one you would now at this point change your thread color to suit your to suit the next part of your of your applique in this case it would go to green i'm going to go straight with the with the black again 
so that you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. And I'm going to start from the bottom. And can you see now, by starting... Sharon joined. Magdalene joined. Hello, Magdalene. Hello, Sharon. <laughs> Here <he> comes. <laughs> okay. So at the bottom, here where we start, I'm now going to catch both the stem as well as the leaf. So I don't have to worry about that one little stitch that I had to go on the stem there. It will just, it will do what it needs to do as we now work. So here we go. Let's get around the leaf quickly. So she said she's sick. I hope you feel better soon or hope that we can make you feel, feel at least a little bit more alive with what we are doing. I'm very, very sorry to hear that, Sharon. Really hope you feel better soon. Hello, Sissy. Okay, and there's Willem with his sister. Magdalene is Willem's sister, to all of you that didn't know. So what we do now, we reach the end of the end of the top of the leaf. So I'm going to do one stitch on the outside and then flip it around to come down the opposite end. Sharon says shop. It's never a good thing to be under the weather. So I really hope you feel better soon, Sharon. Um, so now we go down the opposite end. And if you go back to the pattern, you will see on the leaf, I've drawn in like a... But you made the arches of the blob of the of the Okay. Neither Willem nor myself can can now understand what we must do, ne? But the arc is up the floor. We can now, we are now on it. So I will now here. There is right at the end at the bottom. I'm flipping it around because what I've done on my picture is, okay, we've drawn you a little, but ever die as an Engels like. My English is atrocious tonight. Anyway. Marna had rejoined. Hello, Marna. Hello, Tess. Anyway, so Dov het ons die aardkie op die blaar. So wat ons nou gaan doen, ons gaan nou ons steek verander. Hier om het ons gewerk met a, met a kombaar steek. Hier gaan ons nou werk met a satijn steek. So we can choose. Sharon says it's fine. Thank you, Sharon. I don't know what happened to my English tonight. It went for a walk. So what we're now going to do, if you can come back here, we're going to go from the blanket stitch on my machine, we're going to a normal zigzag stitch. First of all, before I carry on here, I'm going to take my little fabric piece out because I want to make sure that I'm happy with the stitch length that we're going to use. So we pop in, the, we pop in our little sample fabric again, and then we just give it a... There you can see what we what we start off with. I obviously want it far closer together. So here we go. We now instead of the stitch width, we're going to play with the stitch length, and we're making it about normally two is good. Let's just see what we get. But I'm only doing the vein on the leaf, and as you can see, the leaf is not very broad. So I don't want the vein to be all of the, that wide. I want it to be a thinner, th a thinner vein. So we're also going to change the stitch width. We've changed the stitch length now so that it's more closer together. And we're going to, to change the stitch width. Let's see what happens if we're at two here as well. It's too little. I'm making it a little bit more let's see what we have now a little bit more i'm going to go all the way up to three let's see what we have there we are so as you can see the different there's the first try the second try the third try is now what we want to use on our leaf to everybody that joined later on um i know i'm doing the most horrid thing to do this in black but I'm specifically working in black so that you can see the contrast. You will use the same color thread as the pieces that you're working with. Um, just a little hint to, if you want to not have to change a hundred threads, if you use a light gray or a light brown khaki, 
your stitches will actually disappear. Um, you can also use the plastic um, invisible thread. Um, I'm not a fan. I find that it burns once once you iron over it, it melts. So I'm I'm really I'm 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 free balling this. I did not. You can draw the pattern. You can draw the line from our pattern, but I just free balled this as I went along, and then always just clean up your work as you go. So there we are. We've got we've got the leaf. We've got the stem done, and we've got the leaf with its vein. To, thanks to Sharon for rem remembering, telling me to telling me to remind me what it is. Marna also said it's a vein now. Donkey Marna. <laughs> anyway, so here you can see I veered off the side. You know what? In the bigger scheme of things, with 26 of these, you're not going to notice that. If it really bothers you, you can unpick from there to there and redo that little section. Um, for us, it's going to be a play blanket for a baby. It's perfectly okay. So I'm going to go back to back to my satin um, my my blanket stitch, back to my piece of fabric over here because I would just like to see the width. Okay, again, it's too long. Although we are working around the apple, I just want to make the stitch width a little bit less. Let's see what that looks like. I can make it. A a little bit more than that. Let's have a look and let's see what we've got. So there we go. We can see the three different lengths that we started off with. One, two, three. We are happy with this, so this is what we're going to go with. There we are. Pushing this back underneath. And now, if you look again at our pattern, the A has got that little piece of a dent, indent where the, where, this, where the twig comes into it. And then that little indent I'm going to do with the same. Here I've used the satin stitch, but here, just to keep things simple, I'm going to use the same blanket stitch that I'm going around the apple with, and I'm actually going to start there and work my way around. So again, I'm not drawing lines. I'm just free, free, free balling this as I go. So here we are. Until we get to the end, and now we're ready to go around the apple. If we get to a place like this, for you that wasn't here earlier but are now here, we just lift our foot with the needle in the down position and twist our fabric around until we got a straight. What you want to happen is the edge of the fabric that you are applying onto it must be in a straight line with your eye and what you are doing from the front. So up to the lift and twist. Off we go. Yili also joined. All the way from Holland. Hello, my dear, dear, dear friends from Holland. It's so lovely to see that you are also around on a Saturday night. I thought you would be out in Amsterdam having a ball. Anyway, so let's carry on with this. As we go around. There we are. And obviously a little mistake like I showed you on the leaf earlier will be much less noticeable if you if you did it in the same thread or a thread that sort of like disappears on your fabric. Can you see why we used the violin on the back of our block? And then there's joy. Hello my friend Dan. Um, it's Hanley from Sunin that's just joined us as well, so we're glad to have her around. And what we now do is, we're nearly at the end of this. Tilt and twist, tilt and twist, and we're going to get to the end of the apple, and there we are. All done. So we've made the little indent on the apple already there. Uh, so we don't need to do any more. You can now, after these blocks have been assembled and you have quilted it, you're very welcome to embellish this with whatever else you want to do. So 
What now needs to happen, we're going to work around the A and around the other A in the same fashion. I'm not going to change up the stitches now. Um, we're going to end the live soon. So this was just to give you, give you an idea of what, where we are heading. Next week, we will tackle the B block which is B is for ball, B is for ball. So it's also a multilingual block um, of which we are just going to do one. But we're going to do a completely different, um, a completely different applique technique for that specific one. So thank you guys for being with us tonight. Um, we will also show you this finished block next week after we've done these two. Thank you for joining us and, and being here. And if you would like to join us, like I say, within the next half an hour, the pattern will be available in the file section of, of um, Quilts and Crafty Treasures Facebook page. If you can't find it there, or if you seem to struggle with it, it's a PDF, or if you seem to struggle with the download, then please just email or just let me know, and we can email it to you. And as from tomorrow, this live will be available on our YouTube channel, which um, you can easily find with my name. Edward Liebenberg. So thank you all for joining us. See you noch, Willem. <laughs> Goodbye, like a slob. Okay, so there we go. Enjoy your evening and have a lovely, lovely evening further. And Mochum, then Marcel, don't finish.